Um, if I actually sat down or stood here and did a full biography of Kayla, she wouldn't have any time to talk. So all I'm going to say is that I am the president of the Kayla Padilla Fan Club. Please welcome Ms. Kayla Padilla. I just want to start off by saying how really excited I am to be here. I was just joking with my mom that I feel like if you put me in a uniform, I'd blend in. That's how <laughs> so not far removed I am from having graduated here. Um, but just before I get started, for those who don't know me, am I good by that? Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. My name is Kayla. I'm from Torrance. I went to Nativity Catholic School from kindergarten through eighth grade. Came here to Bishop in 2015 where I primarily served as an ambassador from sophomore year onwards. And then was a member of the girls varsity basketball team for all my four years here. I now am at the University of Pennsylvania where I'm a current senior studying finance and management at the Warden School of Business, where I also play basketball among other several involvements that I'll get into a bit later. And then this past summer I had the awesome opportunity to intern for Google as a part of their large customer sales team in Chicago, which is really great. Um, just some fun things about me. I love music. I love to joke that I have the music taste of a six-year-old woman, which is true. And then I love sneakers, so if any of you after want to talk to me about music or sneakers, go ahead. Um, but just before I kind of get into the talk, I just want to address one thing. I'm super fortunate to be in the position I'm in today, and I think that all kind of starts with my parents and my lovely mother is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My parents have been, have always pushed me to reach my maximum potential since day one, but they've always been my biggest supporters as well. So uh, with the autonomy and the freedom that they've given me, I've been comfortable really being ambitious and pursuing different things because I know if I fail that I'll fall back on their love and support, which is a really awesome thing for me to be able to say. And then secondly, I just want to also recognize that basketball has granted me a lot of amazing opportunities throughout my entire lifetime, one of them being the chance to attend a place like the University of Pennsylvania. So all this to say that I don't take these things for granted, but recognize that these things have granted me a lot of luxuries throughout my entire life. So kind of fast forward, or not fast forward, going back a little bit before Bishop, as an eighth grader, I distinctly remember the ambassadors coming to Nativity to speak to us about Bishop and just be a resource for nervous eighth graders like me who were unsure about the next chapter in their lives. And what I distinctly remember is just the ambassador's genuine excitement to be speaking about Bishop and being a resource for us, and just overall how authentic they were in that experience. So coming into Bishop, I always wanted to, uh, I had ambassadors in the back of my mind knowing that was something I wanted to do, but wasn't sure if I exactly fit the bill of what an ambassador's, you know, looked like or was like in general. So my freshman year at Bishop, it was a really solid experience. I think I credit a lot of that to the success I found early on on the basketball court and making an immediate impact from the get-go, in addition to kind of just like finding my groove as a student athlete in high school or in general. So when it came time to try out for ambassadors, I wanted to give it a shot. I mean, Bishop already in that short period of time had given so much to me and I wanted to find a way to give back to it in some capacity that was fun and challenging. And truth be told, I just thought ambassadors were really cool, so I wanted to be one. So as luck would have it, I was accepted into ambassadors, but I wasn't 100% sure why. So on our first uh, day of ambassador training my sophomore year, Mr. Fitz made us, uh, all the new people, kind of say why we thought we were chosen. And I was 100% convinced it was because I had found some early on success on the basketball court and could leverage that experience to be a good representation of Bishop. And while that was true to a certain degree, I think I came to the quick realization that ambassador is not about externalities or involvements. It's more so about who you are and less about what you do. And I think that's a really incredible lesson that I learned early on that's applicable to any of you here, regardless if you're an ambassador or not. I think just as high schoolers, due to the nature of college being right around the corner, we can become so intensely focused on what we do that we forget who we are when we strip away all the extracurriculars, all the accomplishments, because I think at the end of the day, no one is going to remember you for scoring a triple-double or taking six AP classes. They're going to remember you for the kind of person that you were and the real impact that you left. So kind of reeling back to ambassadors, I think the experience as a whole has 
and its benefits have really truly revealed themselves more as time has gone by. So I think one of the best parts of a master's is being able to be presented with real-time opportunities to put into practice what you learn. So that stuff like positive body language, being mindful of your filler words, which I still have trouble from time to time, uh, learning to adjust you know, how you speak and what you say depending on the audience, and just in general being comfortable, but more importantly being confident sometimes navigating ambiguous situations. So I credit a lot of why I feel so comfortable heading into sometimes stressful things like job interviews or interviews and, and podcasts and panels due to my time as an ambassador. And, and there's a saying that I really love, it's you don't rise to the occasion, you fall back on your highest level of training. And I like to think that ambassador is just one whole training experience that is developing you into the best leader and best communicator possible. So when it comes time for you guys to enter interviews and podcasts and presentations of your own, you'll fall back on your experiences as an ambassador and by that alone, you'll be miles ahead. So kind of switching gears, obviously bas or ambassadors was one part of my high school experience, but obviously another big part was the basketball component. And a lot of my experience was focused on securing a, a scholarship to get to the next level and obviously finding the best fit for me in terms of what school I wanted to go to. And through that experience, I kind of want to introduce this idea that I think has served as an undercurrent for a lot of the decisions I've made from high school onwards. And that is the idea of comfort versus challenge. And this is a notion with that a lot of things in life, you have the option to either want to challenge yourself or to remain comfortable. And obviously there are times in life and stages where that call for one or the other. But I think as a high schooler and someone who is just so eager to learn and grow, challenging yourself brought about the opportunity to uncover more of myself that has been there all along. So with my recruitment process and navigating that experience, it was a literally a reflection of this idea. I had the option to either you know, stay at home, be close to my family, and get into schools that, frankly, I think I could have gotten into without basketball. Or I could go across the country, be independent in a new city, and be constantly surrounded by people and opportunities that would push me to be better. So at the end of the day, the decision was a no-brainer for me. But I don't mean this to say that challenging yourself looks like you having to go 2,500 miles away from everything that you know. Challenging yourself could look different for anyone. It can look like staying home and, and being close to family, or simply boiling down to pursuing an opportunity you've always wanted to go after, but have been a little fearful or a little hesitant. So at the end of the day, only you know what challenges look like to you and what falls under that certain category. So obviously, having gone through that whole experience during high school, uh, a common question I get is, how I was able to get a scholarship to go to a place like that? And truthfully, there is no sort of formula or step-by-step -step process on how to get from point A to point B. But I think I, I did a great job during high school putting myself in the best position possible, uh, both academically and athletically. So when people ask me this question, I say it was through a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices. There are a lot of days here at Bishop where I would wake up early in the morning to get a workout in, come to, get, come to classes and complete a full day of school have practice afterwards, drive to shoot 360 if any of you know what that is, and, and get some more shots up, and then spend the rest of my night studying and, and doing homework. So and a lot of my days were just a carbon copy of that. So I think a lot of people are in love with the results, but they're not in love with the process. And in order to get to the places where you really want to go, you have to be in love with the journey and everything that entails. So all the successes, all the failures, all the frustration, the grind, because ultimately there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going and you have to put in the work to get to the places where you really want to go. So kind of fast forwarding to my freshman year at Penn, I was super excited to be venturing into something so new in a new city, in a new place, uh, but again, very fearful at the same time for those same exact reasons. I was so far away from home, far away from everything that I had known my entire life. And while on the outside it looked like I had a spe spectacular freshman year, I mean, I was at Penn in Ivy League school, I was studying at Warden, which is one of the best business schools in the world, and I had cracked the starting lineup as a freshman. But as much as it looked great on the outside, I was struggling a lot. I missed home every single day, I wasn't getting salutatorian-like grades, and I was feeling like a bit of an imposter at Penn, just because I didn't do that in the traditional way and, and by way of basketball instead. And I think this is a really powerful point to make because as a student athlete, and I think as someone who a lot of people generally regard as having it all together, oftentimes I really don't. Um, but just by show of hands, does anyone know what like, imposter syndrome is or have heard of the term before? 
Okay, cool. But just as a reminder for those who don't know what imposter syndrome is, it's basically feeling like you don't belong in a certain position or place that you're in, doubting your abilities and kind of feeling like a fraud. So as you can imagine, at a place like Penn and Ivy League school, imposter syndrome is huge for a lot of people and is obviously prevalent in a lot of places like maybe here, even at Bishop. So as time has gone on, a lot of people have asked me how I've been able to get over imposter syndrome. And truth be told, I don't think the feelings ever leave. I think they kind of carry with you into new experiences, but there are healthy ways to manage it. To manage it. So I think the first thing is to surround yourself with a really great support system that will not only affirm you for certain parts of your identity, but for who you are as a whole. And then secondly, I think it's important to like put things into perspective. So speaking to my personal experiences, I said, okay, I got into Penn because of basketball. But who cares? That's awesome. I, something that I really love to do and something that I'm talented at has landed me at one of the most amazing schools. So instead of dwelling on the untrue fact that I didn't belong at Penn, I decided to throw myself into things that make me feel like I did. So I worked extra hard to be the best basketball player I could be on the court. I enrolled in classes that aligned with my interests, like a, a class I took my sophomore spring that was dedicated to Bruce Springsteen's music. I joined clubs like the Penn Philippines Association to be surrounded by people who look like me and understood my background. And I said yes to being on panels, not about basketball, but about journalism and speaking the truth and prove that I was so much more to the school than just a basketball player. So I think it's important to kind of reel back and take a step back and putting, into, putting things into perspective definitely changed a lot for me. I think it's really important, again, just as a student athlete to separate who you are as an athlete from who you are as a human being. I'm able to recognize that basketball is an integral part of who I am, but it's not everything. And over these past few years, I've taken giant leaps forward in terms of embracing the different parts that make me me and kind of being more comfortable sharing that with others. So one big thing for me was music and sharing that love of playing and learning about the topic in general with others. And that's taken me, taken me to learning a lot of new different instruments and even creating this version of a game called Hurdle, but for a version for Bruce Springsteen. Um, and then just like another enormous step forward that I think I took uh, was in April of 2020 when we were all in lockdown during the pandemic. I was sent home from Penn during my freshman year. And I created this platform called the Sideline Post, which is something that I've always wanted to create um, since you know the start of college. And the Sideline Post is the first ever media platform for college athletes to share their stories through their own words. And through this experience, I had to learn how to make a website, run social media pages, uh, be an editor in chief all at the same time. And despite the kind of early technical struggles that entailed, the North Star of having this platform for student athletes to engage in really important conversations had guided me from the start. And since our inception, we've published 50 plus full length stories from athletes across the country, representing a really diverse amount of students, university, universities, and sports. So that truly has been one of the most fulfilling experiences I've had in my college career, and I think it's something that has really brought value to the athletic community at Penn and in the kind of the broader student athlete network and for those who would choose to engage with the platform. So I know I probably just spit out a lot of the things that I do, uh, but with that I kind of want to just address the importance of what I think is really key and that's quality over quantity. I think the importance of sort of being intentional about what you choose to involve yourself in, you have the option to either kind of overextend yourself and allocate small bits of yourself to everything, or you can be intentional about what you choose to involve yourself in and be able to allocate your full self and your full time to those things. And with everything that I like to do, I love to do it at the highest level. And kind of your textbook definition of a per perfectionist and a high achiever. Um, but I think that ability to be self-motivated, goal-oriented, has really catapulted me into the lot of things I found success in during my time here at Bishop and my time here at Penn, and is something I consider to be a really great strength of mine. However, as Fitz loves to remind me, um, your greatest strength is often always your greatest weakness as well. So just as much as I think the ability to, for my ambition to push me forward and strive for success, it also hinders me from ever really truly finding satisfaction in the things I'm able to accomplish. 
So for instance, a few weeks ago, I, I got news that, some really great news that to return back to Google after college. And in addition to that, I, I landed a really great opportunity to work for uh, a small music company. And keep in mind, these are two things that I really wanted for a long period of time. But when they happened, and I got the news, I was sort of just really nonchalant about it. I was like, okay, well, yeah, that was supposed to happen, right? I mean, I worked really hard, so that was the result that was supposed to happen. And so I kind of just brushed it off, and it took me a few days, maybe even a week, to kind of take a step back and be like, wow, that was kind of huge. I should probably give myself a moment to be proud of myself and recognize, you know, what I did. And I think that moment was sort of a broader reflection of something I've been struggling with my entire life, and, and that's sort of a healthy grasp, of, or a healthy pride in oneself. And it's obviously a learning practice, so I'm still working on it as I go, but I think it's a good reminder for you all during this really sort of tough time in life, just like trying to prepare for college, trying to figure out what it means to be in high school, to give yourself grace, and to be proud of yourselves for the little and big things, um, because that's important. Like, how you view yourself and your perception of self is huge. Um, so I think that was just one quick message that I wanted to share. But kind of just wrapping up, I, I want to leave time for questions if there are any. Um, I think the main piece of this sort of dialogue for me here is just the importance of knowing yourself and embracing who you are and leaning into that. And I have Bishop to thank for a lot of these experiences and for so many integral experiences that have led me to a lot of success. Um, Post, or post high school and in college as I am right now. And I think, you know, from the people I've met to the things I've involved in, they've all grown fuller in memory and purpose and significance over time. And I think just my being here is a testament to how much this school and the people mean to me. And I want to thank you guys for just being here. I, I totally did not feel qualified to have an alumni speaker series for me. I'm four years out. I was sitting in your shoes just four years ago. So um, I'm really excited honored at this opportunity. I want to thank Fitz for putting this together and the ambassadors. Um, but happy to answer any questions about Penn, basketball, anything else about Google. Um, but just want to thank you guys again for your time. And for being here. Questions? Don't be shy. Um, did you know early on in high school that you wanted to do Yeah, I'll repeat the question. Yeah, sorry, what's your name? Harriet. Harriet asked, um, like, if I knew what I wanted to do, I guess, when I got into college, like, what I wanted to study. Uh, in high school? Okay. So, that's actually a funny story. I am in love with the show Grey's Anatomy. So, during my whole recruitment process, I thought I wanted to be a surgeon, which is absolutely insane. So, when I was talking to schools, I was like, yeah, I want to get into medicine. I want to be a surgeon. And then I sat down at this one school, and they were giving me the timeline of what it takes to actually be a surgeon. I was like, okay, scratch that. That's a deterrent to being a surgeon if we need more of those. Um, but ju that just goes to say that I think what you want to do changes a lot. I didn't know I wanted to like pursue business, I think, until later in my high school career. Um, and obviously, I think it's much better suited for me in terms of just like what I was good at. Um, but I think a, a major lesson that I learned in college is that it's okay not to have to not have everything figured out, um, and to allow yourself to be open to new experiences, taking new classes that could sort of broaden broader your horizons. Um, but no, I don't even know what I want to do after college. I, I, I'm lucky enough to have another year after I graduate from Penn to sort of figure that out and get my master's. Um, but it's still very much up in the air, and it's something that I've grown comfortable with, just being okay with the unknown. And I think that's sort of important for a lot of us here, that for those not knowing whether they're going to college or what they want to study, that, that's totally fine and totally valid. I think everything works out um, by itself in time. So that's a great question. Um, what, helped you, what helped you adapt to being miles away from your parents? Sure. Oh, what's your name? Atiyah. Yeah, that's a toughie. Um, I'm a huge family person. Um, my mom's here, like I said earlier, and I'm very close to my family and my best friends. And I also have two younger twin sisters that are, are nine, so that definitely didn't help being away from home. And, and there's no like sort of secret formula to getting through that. I think I think it's important to embrace the homesickness because you know having something you miss so much means that it means means that you know it's something to love so much, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. 
Um, so some things that I did, I would FaceTime my family like every night just to update them. I'd, I'd call my mom at least three times a day with a new crisis, um, and then she'd answer it every time. Um, but I mean, there's no like kind of way around the homesickness and everything, but I'm also very fortunate that my parents were able to, to come to a lot of my games during my freshman year. And I think it's important, like once you're away from home, I think it makes you understand like the importance of your family a, lo a lot more now that they're gone. Uh, not literally gone, but just away. Um, so yeah, I think it's just really up to you, but I made sure that I was very consistent about calling my parents and just and being there for my sisters, especially since they're just growing up, but they're no secret formula to escaping homesickness. I know the time just rang, so uh, <laughs> if anyone has any more questions. So I just wanted to know, how do you deal with stress? How do I deal with stress? That's a good question. What was your name? Jacob. Jacob? Yeah, stress is a huge thing. Um, I think stress is just like kind of the underlying feeling in college, which is unfortunate. I'm sure it is in high school. Uh, but again, it's like sort of different for everyone. So something that I do, obviously I play basketball at Penn, and there are outside things that I like to get myself involved in that kind of take away you know, the pressures of being on the court or, or school in general. Uh, so one thing in particular, I like love to play instruments. So I make sure to like block out at least like 20 minutes every single day to just do something that I love that is good for my mental health. Uh, as of recently, I've been journaling. I feel like that's really important. And as I was mentioning earlier, um, like I have a hard time kind of accepting the good things that happen and the accomplishments. So journaling allows me time to really just think about my day and what I go through and to acknowledge all, all the good and all the bad and have that written down. So just finding individualized things that work for you and, and being very intentional about blocking out time for stuff that you love, I think is super important to make sure, you know, you're just not going through your days just to go through them. Yeah. Uh, did you ever experience like burnout? And if so, how did you deal with it? Yeah, burnout. What was your name? Gia. Gia. Yeah, no, burnout is huge. Um, I think as a college athlete especially, it can often feel like a full-time job and not just something that you love to do. So there are days where I feel like I'm just going through the motions with a lot of things, and I think that's because of burnout itself. Um, but I think, obviously, as you transition through high school and go into college, it, I think that's where the intentionality of things becomes super important. Um, so if I was being burned out by something I didn't love to do, then like, what's the point? But if I'm being burned out by basketball, it's because I know it's for a bigger purpose. Um, so again, being intentional about those kinds of things. Um, but I think it's, again, really important to find things that are very individualized for you to be able to take a step back. So instead of like having going through the motions and during practice or classes, uh, for practice especially, I like to take a few like minutes before practice just to kind of like, like, okay, this is an opportunity to get better. This is an opportunity to work on things that I you know need to work on. Um, so just being mindful and, and putting things into perspective, I feel. But unfortunately, I haven't cracked the whole burnout thing, but I'll get back to you when I do. One more question. Um, how do you cheer yourself up after a bad game? Ah, that's a good one. Um, What's your name? Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, with as, with as many good games I feel like I've had, there have been an equal or it's not so greater amount of bad games. Um, I think, speaking just basketball-wise, or just anyone who's an athlete here, it's important. I remember in high school, I would always kind of, after games, reflect on two things that I know I can improve on and kind of just changing the terminology to not necessarily think I played bad, but have things to improve on. And then also focus on things that I did well. But kind of bringing this into a more like philosophical matter. Um, I think in high school I learned that there is so much more to life than just a basketball game. So oftentimes I would feel like when I lost it was the end of the world, when in reality that is just something so minute. And obviously basketball is so important to me and I take every game seriously. Um, but I think one thing that I've learned is just that there is, again, so much more than just a win and a loss and being able to put things into perspective in that sort of manner. Um, but again, just to be more technical, you play basketball? Yeah. Yeah, it's just about um, kind of changing the terminology. Instead of focusing on what you did bad, it's now focusing on what you can improve. And then again, focusing on what you did well during the game is in addition to that. But um, it's a really good question. Ryan McKenzie, if you would. We have a little present for you because we appreciate you coming all the way out here to talk to us.
Thank you guys. I appreciate that.